me, Lauren, again. Hi! So today is the you know, long-awaited um, update to the Kansai Ben video that I made in the spring. So um, I'll put a link to that somewhere. Maybe here, maybe here, maybe down in the description? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But um, a lot of people have requested that I make like an Osaka Ben video or another Kansai Ben video. But since I actually live in Osaka, I don't really hear um, Kyoto Ben or Wakayama Ben or Kobe Ben or any other, you know, dialect from the Kansai area. So this video is just exclusively on Osaka Ben. And actually, this is going to be two videos. Um, each one is going to have five aspects of Osaka Ben. And um, they sort of build off one another. So, um, yes, uh, you guys are already watching part one. <laughs> but you do, I think, need to have watched part one to really watch part two and understand all of part two. So, um, yeah, don't skip ahead. Don't do it. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to talk about is hen. In the Osaka dialect, um, instead of like masen or um, nai, as in like in a uh, kyojungo in standard Japanese, they use hen instead. So, for example, if you wanted to say, I don't understand, you can say, wakare hen. Whereas in standard Japanese, it would be wakara nai or wakarimasen. So, if you notice, not only is there no nai or masen, it's um, also changed to like a re instead of wakara, it's wakare. So, before a hen, it has to be an e sound. So, whatever, um, if it's like a ri, it has to be re. If it's um, B has to be bit. It has to be a, an a sound. Other examples would be if you wanted to say, like, I can't eat something. Um, you could say, taberare hen. So, I can't, I can't eat it. But in standard Japanese, it would be taberare masen. Um, here, it's taberare masen in standard Japanese. So, there's already a re sound. So, you don't really need to change it to anything else. It's just drop off the masen and add hen. Whereas with this next example, um, I hear this a lot as a teacher, um, if you wanted to say I can't do it or I can't, you can say teke hen, in Osaka. But in standard Japanese that would be deki nai. So if you hear it's deki nai in standard Japanese and teke hen in Osaka ben. So the ki has been changed to a ke, so you can add a hen, <laughs> basically. Um, and you know, the list goes on. Really, anything that you can have, like a nai, it could be a hen. Next, we're ta going to talk about um, na. Like, let's say it were really, really, really hot, like it was this summer. Um, I would turn to my coworkers and be like, ah, oh, atsumi na. And that means it's so hot, right? Or it's, it's hot, right? And um, if you notice, I said na. In standard Japanese, I would say, ah, oh, atsumi ne. Um, so basically, anything where there's a ne, um, so like a right or like a cute sort of ending to something, you could change it to na in Osaka. I mean, that's not to say that people don't use ne or they don't use masen or nai or whatever. I mean, people do use um, Osaka Ben and Kyojingo, standard Japanese, interchangeably. So, yeah. But young people pretty much primarily use Osaka Ben. And um, with other people from Osaka, they mostly use Osaka Ben. Um, so, yeah. Other examples of na versus ne would be like, kawaii na, instead of kawaii ne. Like, it's cute, right? Or, kirei na. Um, like, it's pretty, right? Instead of, kirei ne. Last would be, sugoi na. Instead of, sugoi ne. Um, so, sugoi is like, awesome, or great, or things like that. So, um, yeah. So, sugoi na. <laughs> the next one I'm going to be talking about is, yado. Yado, I definitely hear a lot as a teacher, too. Um, but it basically means exactly the same as this show. So this show in standard Japanese means both properly and kind of like a right. <laughs> but most of the time, I think it's 
Probably. Let's say you watch the weather report and you wanted to tell your friend what the weather was, you could say, um, it'll probably rain tomorrow. So, hasta a abeyado in Osaka Ben. Um, but in standard Japanese, it would be hasta a ame de sho. It means exactly the same, but instead of de sho, in Osaka, they use yaro. Next! Next is homma. Homma. So, homma is really frequently used, and I'm actually starting to use it myself. Um, homma in standard Japanese is honto. If you wanted to say, like, really? You could say homma ni or honto ni in standard Japanese. For an example, um, if you wanted to say, like, thank you very much or, like, really thank you, um, you could say honma ni arigatou gozaimasu. Or if you wanted to say that in standard Japanese, you can say honto ni arigatou gozaimasu. But really, in Osaka, like, I hardly ever hear honto. Hardly ever. It's always honma. Always, always, always honma. Like, very rarely, very, very rarely do I hear honto. <laughs> um, so that's a really good one to know, actually, if you're going to the Osaka area. The next one um, could get a little bit complicated. So, in standard Japanese, if you guys have studied that, I'm assuming, I'm really, like, I'm assuming that you have studied at least a little bit of Japanese before watching this video. But, um, in standard Japanese, iru is sort of like to exist. Like, something that is alive exists. Um, and in Osaka, they use oru instead of iru. And that was something that was really confusing to me when I first came he back here to work, when I hear I heard this like all the time. Um, so, um, normally, if you wanted to ask in standard Japanese, like, if Nakano-sensei was here, you could say, Nakano-sensei wa imasu ka? So, that's standard Japanese, so there's imasu. Um, in Osaka, they say, uh, Nakano-sensei oru. <laughs> so, not only is there like no articles or anything, but you notice that it's oru instead of imasu or iru. Um, so I hear that thing, like that stuff a lot, a lot as a teacher. If you wanted to be really polite, you could say Nakano sensei wa imasen ka in standard Japanese, which means isn't Nakano sensei here in Osaka? Instead, you would say Nakano sensei orehen. <laughs> So once again, no articles, no ka, just ore hen. So obviously you need to know the hen part to understand that. But like, isn't Nakano sensei here? Same meaning, different words. <laughs> so really, that's about it for part one. So um, if you stick around for part two, um, you can learn five more um, aspects of Osaka Ben. It'll be really helpful if you're going to be visiting the area, or um, certainly, certainly if you're living here. Just sharing my knowledge with you. So um, stick around for part two, um, which I'll put a link to somewhere. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be uploading these at the same time. I don't know. But um, also, um, if you haven't caught my uh, Kansai Ben video, I'll put a link to it someplace. And yeah, enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.